<coughs> All right. Well, we are in Fullerton, California. That's the police department right there to the right. We're just arriving for the city council meeting this evening. So far, they're not showing too much out on the streets. I might go for a little bit more of a walk tonight. We'll see what the layout is. It's good to see everybody. We've got 13 viewers. Go ahead and tweet. Uh, and if you could do me a favor, tweet to the Fullerton Police Department and City Council. They no longer have to expect us. We have arrived. In the press is here. If you could tweet that out for me, I would appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you can always let KTLA know that we're here. Rumor has it that was a particular individual. Uh, <laughs> That, uh, people were having one of the particular individuals people were having a run-in with uh, on Saturday and their news van is here I'm uh, coming at you live with uh, uh, just myself tonight and a few uh, anonymous and concerned individuals and we'll see who's over at the council meeting and momentarily Hey, I can actually type. Good evening, everybody. That doesn't work that way. Wow. I'm learning how to actually type in my um, <coughs> Android for the first time. Forgive me. Uh, good thing this Android is nice and tough. It did take a pretty good fall the other day when I smacked out of my hand. We're still looking for a place to park. We'll be there in a minute. You guys just slide out. I'll get a spot somewhere down We got cops right here. Why don't you keep going straight for a minute? You don't want to attribute us to the vehicle right now, do you? Live? I'm muted. We are live. I'm muting for a sec. All right, we're back at you. We're outside now. We are in Fullerton, heading to the city council meeting. Once again, we can see a few news vans this evening. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I was only there m myself in the morning. I had to attend... Uh, some other things in the afternoon and the evening but yeah those guys they were heroes that day certainly uh, upholding the safety and everything for everybody what's up you guys how's it going pretty good it's McKenna right on hey how's nice going, to meet you McKenna let's go right on good to see you again yeah uh, you too yeah, it's been a while <laughs> so you guys going inside or staying out here or what I think I'm going to be I may stay outside and go in and out. I don't know. Okay. We'll see. I'm, we'll I'm, see I'm how planning on staying out here um, just to, 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 to show up. I don't know. The guy's a live stream from. I think Patty's in there right now. Right on. It's um, good to talk to her this evening. Because what was that? It'd be good to talk to her this evening. Yeah. That was, a, that was a real joke what happened there, you know. That was all the way down at the transportation center. I'm sure she was completely clear from the original order to disperse. The, the air, the dispersal area. That's ridiculous. That's Crossbones here with us tonight, everybody. Oh my god, Adam! <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, my octopus <laughs> friends! Adam, somewhere around here, he got arrested. Who did? Adam. Scrubber Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think she's been Patty. Patty, yeah. Her and Scrubber are here. I can sit out for a while. Yeah. I'm a bit with her. Alright, we're live, yeah, baby. Probably. We are live, and we are at the courthouse, and I'm glad to have you. On the phone, we got. All right, you push it, you push it. We got our technical support, says it's going fucking big tonight. So, stay with us. I see a bunch of Boy Scouts that are bigger than me, and that always creeps me out. I just gotta say that right now. There's Boy Scouts, and they're full-grown men. So, be wary. Boy Scouts that are bigger than me. Hey, did you uh, get to see what happened? You got the... 
turn of events that happened Saturday? I did not see the turn of events. I mean, I saw Adam's recorded footage. I saw some of y'all's footage. I can't figure out how to put the stinking news on. Light on. I saw the news footage. Uh, I'm going to go inside for a minute. We'll take a look at it on the inside. Good evening. It looks good and friendly this evening so far, folks. Wasn't so friendly the other day. Justice Warriors. I think I know who that is. Hey, good to see you. you. Good. Good head out front. See out front. <laughs> I want to know why I can't get that light to work. I'm trying to see. Trying to figure out how to set up the, the LED light on the phone itself. One of our favorite uh, mainstream medias here would definitely be Telemundo or uh, Channel 52, <coughs> you see down here, ladies and gentlemen. They are, in fact, really uh, one of the more respectable mainstream media outlets that exist. Uh, they tend to cover more of these stories than any of the other mainstream outlets and uh, all of Southern California, all over Oxnard, all over Anaheim and and the rest of the area. Glad to see you guys here. Seriously, you guys are awesome. We appreciate Telemundo 52 very much. Very important, they're one of the best. They're, like I said, they're one of the few mainstream media is, uh, that really, really reports these stories, whether it just be Kelly Thomas or uh, Robert Rodriguez, you know, to Alfonso Limon, to uh, all of the difficulties that are going around. I remember seeing them in many of the uh, different cases out here from Manuel Diaz and Joey Acevedo uh, out in Anaheim. Uh, so uh, we appreciate them. Make sure uh, if you have the opportunity, check out their websites and see if you can't get them to, uh, you know, perhaps translate for you. You might find a lot of interesting news going on in your area that you're unaware of because it's being covered by uh, a particular news medium you're not used to finding that information on. And on that subject, you can go online nowadays in most cases and seek your news in any country and find some sort of translator to be able to understand specifically what's going on. Good city council meeting, like I said, security forces seem minimal at the time. I'm sure they're ready to increase in size. At any given moment, it's the uh, police station across the street. It's a little, the lighting isn't so good. I think I'm going to go inside, see what's going on. The meeting's going to be starting in a, in a short while. Perhaps at least start the meeting on the inside. People are still being seated, it looks like. See what time it is. Right, right. That may be one of the areas I consider going to the overflow. Concerned citizens to show up here tonight. Kelly Thomas. Oh yeah, absolutely. You are? Yeah. I'll ask sure. You want to do an interview with me real quick? Um, not really. That's cool. You could do a voice interview with me if you want. You don't want to be on camera. 
Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, you're doing great, but don't, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people in there. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. A lot of concerned citizens here today. Yeah. Are we going to go ahead and just push the uh, the Fullerton stream for the inside, or should we go no, consider please. sitting inside tonight? We sat inside so many times. I'm kind of interested in what's going to happen. Go to the library and I guess watch the overflow on TV or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to. Can we hook up to the network? Can we can we save our bandwidth? Uh, I'm not really issue? I'm not really worried about wherever we go. I the think library. We should keep our live stream going because. Yeah. They, uh, as soon as something comes up irrelevant, their their stream will go out or something. I'd like to yeah. document this night correctly. Um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be you're, plenty. You're of press, so you should be you should get a front row seat up there. Inside. You want me to go in and get some pictures while you take take care of the stream out here for stream, a while? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I don't know. They they said they're already full. I should be. You should be able to press it right in. I'm there. gonna get my photos out here. I don't care about photos inside. No, I'm talking about live streaming inside. I don't. I think we've got the live stream inside. Is that where we want to be tonight? Everybody, where would you like the live stream for In League okay. Press to be? Would you be con interested in it being inside or outside? <laughs> he tripped in the bush. <laughs> Poor AJ tripped in the bush. I'll go ahead and put that vote up again. Would you like us to consider going to the library and sitting inside, perhaps with a group of people there, trying to get inside here, or just covering the story from the outside at this time? Sorry about pushing you in the bush yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Making you that. look good. So. But don't. Shh. Good. All uh, right. We got two volts <laughs> uh, wanting me to sit inside. Yeah, dude, that's fucking definitely. I don't know inside. if I'm gonna get inside. Go press it right up to the front. Get a better live stream than we did in the show. All right, we're gonna see about getting inside. Chief Hughes here this evening. Hello, Chief. I guess he wasn't uh, saying hi to me this evening, so this is the inside for the uh, meeting this evening. They do live stream from the inside very often. It looks like they've got no standing. So this yeah, is this where the press is in the back here? Is that where I'm? Okay. Well, it looks like they're standing room with the press. Huh? Yeah, there you go. There we go. Pardon me. Pardon me. Scooting by, if you can make it. Which side should I scoot you on? Ah, I think that was a good decision. Very good, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. So we've got the night as right as. We've got a number of people from Anaheim, Corey Klein. We've got Jean. Evening, Jean. Okay, you guys made the decision. I'm inside. We've got uh, Anaheim outside in case. And he'll get a hold of me. I like the inside. Save me up some commentation.
being inside suits me well. I won't have to talk so much this evening. <laughs> Thanks for being everybody. This is in fact the Fullerton City Council meeting. They do have their own stream as well. Uh, but once again, at least you know this stream should be unimpeded. I hadn't picked up an agenda for this evening yet. If you look closely, you'll notice Ron is down on the uh, right-hand side in the front. I believe his daughter is sitting with him this evening. <laughs> We've got George Olivio in the house this evening. It's a whole new world, huh? It's a whole new world. Absolutely. Oh, live streaming? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it does pretty good in regards to the streaming technology. I am using Ustream right now as well. Perhaps it was one of the two or three that were up. I think. Yeah, yeah, Ustream, Ustream. Yeah. Is it free to use or do you need to subscribe? It's free to use with limitations, you know, based upon your needs, you know, and your audience. And then you can pay more if, if need be. Well, it's a good night for handkerchiefs. She was arrested the other day. Some of us, it's uh, important to us to bring the story.
I think Crossbones is outside right now. He may have gone over to the overflow. But I know Crossbones is outside. I believe PM Beers is inside. I know George Olivio was inside a moment ago. I didn't see if he was going to be streaming tonight. So we've got at least four streamers here this evening. Oh, I was just going to say, a lot of kids do. We just took a freak out Dougie, and he went through right in front of him. We used to take a big spoonful of soil. And I thought we did it. It's big soil. I tried to add him on his soil. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be willing to stay standing for whoever, you know. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I'll, stay standing. I'll let anybody sit wherever I'm standing. Right? Yeah. If, yeah, I don't care, but you know, you got to talk them into it. I don't know. I think it's a. I don't know. Let me see. Get my spot. New Jersey, Monmouth County. I was in uh, Union Beach. Yeah. I was on the demo crew, but we also had our own kitchen and delivery for hot food. They were one of the groups that worked with us. They gave me the jacket. <laughs> I, I grew up right down the road from Howard Beach. Okay, I'm not sure. What beach? Howard Beach in, in uh, Queens. Okay, that's, oh, okay, oh, okay, yeah, over in New York. Yeah, I had some friends over there too, but uh, yeah, I ended up, I never got out of Jersey, <laughs> but I love, it was great, you know, it was, I'm going to be going back there soon, I hope. Yeah, you guys heard me, I'll be trying to visit you guys within the next second or, you know, first, end of the first quarter of this year.
about the, uh, the fire department here. Evening, everybody. I can still talk to you for a little while. Before it gets started. Starting now. She was influential in helping the Friends of Jazz, the Muckenthaler, and Fort and Arboretum. Elaine Redfield was a strong supporter in the arts and music, such as the Pacific Sympathy and the Cal State Fullerton and Opera Pacific. She wrote a famous letter to Henry Sigerstrom in the early 1980s, asking him to donate some of his bean field to create what is now the Orange County Performing Arts Center. Linnell Citadel, Citadel was very important in developing the Citizens Environmental Education Program at the Arboretum and at Cal State Fullerton for over the last 10 years. She was a junior high teacher for many years and eventually became principal at Parks Junior High. And she was my seventh grade science teacher. <laughs> so we are now moving on to our invocation. And we have Father Jim from St. Mary's Church who will lead us. And Father Jim, I understand your church last year celebrated its 100th anniversary. Can you give us a little spiel about what your church has been doing in the community? <laughs> Hello, 
loving creator God, we thank you for this uh, as a community on this evening to deliberate uh, the needs of our community here in Fullerton. May you guide us with your wisdom and direct us with your strength to accomplish what you want us to do in this community. Uh, we strive to be a loving community that creates an atmosphere where people can come and be safe and happy. May the council members who serve us as public servants do so well on this evening as they deliberate what needs to be done. May we as a community reach out to those around us and continue to love our neighbor. Let us pray for all those, the three women that we uh, acknowledge today who have passed away and also for the soul of Kelly Thomas as we go forth. We say this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Jim. They have been serving this community for 95 years. I wonder if the Scoutmaster would come up and give us a little history and tell us what you're doing in the community today. <coughs> throughout the city. Uh, some of those have been uh, scouting for food, uh, Relay for Life, uh, numerous Eagle projects that have been done both for the city and for uh, various uh, community organizations. And uh, we provide a good outdoor uh, outlet for outdoor activities for the kids, and especially here we don't see the forest as, as much as uh, some of the other ones would. How many of those have you graduated in that 95 years? Well, we've, we've had 123, including uh, one last night. Would you be so kind as to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Be great. Thank you. 
air is human. Yeah, certainly in Fullerton. Good evening, Mayor Chafee and members of the council. Corporal J.D. DiCaprio here. Um, I've been a police officer in this city for approximately 28 years, and for those that don't know, I've been assigned to working with the homeless for the past 12 years. Um, I'm honored to be here tonight. This is a uh, great opportunity to uh, give you a brief update of kind of what we've been doing. Uh, we're two different <laughs> When I'm a police officer, obviously I'm out working with the homeless, and when I'm not in uniform, I'm out volunteering my time with Coast to Coast Foundation. Uh, I've been coordinating with them since uh, 2009, and uh, just to tell you a little bit about the organization, uh, Coast to Coast came along at a time when uh, we were really lacking resources in the community for the homeless, and since then, uh, we started to collaborate on, on different issues and different needs. And I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things that Coast to Coast Foundation does for the Homeless Labor and Officer Program. Uh, it's not just myself, but I have three other partners, so it's a team of four. We work various uh, day and evenings throughout the week, so we have seven days of coverage. But when we come across homeless folks that are in need, uh, Coast to Coast Foundation will provide for us bus passes when needed. Uh, they'll provide for us uh, $5 gift cards to the local restaurants when we come across someone who's obviously hungry and can't make it to a feed that day. Um, one of the other programs that uh, they're uh, very uh, helpful in providing for us is uh, a motel voucher program. And we primarily use that for two different reasons. If we come across a mother and young children, and we need a place to put them up for a night or two. Uh, that's extremely important because sometimes it takes quite a bit of time for us to get resources in place, um, typically throughout the county of Orange. So between the, uh, the bus passes, the food vouchers, the motel vouchers, um, those we use on a regular basis. Uh, on my off time, I feed with Coast to Coast for down at La Palma Park at uh, one of their off-site locations that the city has designated down there across from the park. And we do what's called a sack lunch program. We feed uh, the first and third Sunday of every month. Um, we start our feed at 2.30 and we prepare approximately 200 sack lunches uh, right there at that location. And it all gets done within about an hour. Uh, aside from that, um, one of our uh, focuses is actually on the three main holidays throughout the year being Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. During those times, we prepare hot meals, and this year for Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, we prepared around five to 600 hot meals at each of those feeds. Um, we typically have 60 to 80 volunteers, sometimes as many as 200 volunteers that show up at those locations on those dates. So, uh, that's just some, a little bit about some of the programs. Uh, recently, we had some of our folks here in the city reach out to uh, our brothers and sisters in Anaheim and talk to them a little bit about their homeless population and what they're doing down in their city. Um, I was called into the city of Anaheim to attend a couple of their meetings, and out of that, they created a program very similar to our outreach program in this city. Um, they actually assigned immediately eight officers to help with the homeless in their city. So we're collaborating closely with them. Uh, one of the programs that Coast to Coast we really pride ourselves on is each and every day I'm out there interacting with homeless people. And on certain given occasions, I do run into people that have options. And in talking with them, if it appears that there's an option of reuniting them back with family or friends, we actually, through Coast Coast Foundation and the money we've raised, we actually send them back to family or friends. And that can include anything from a bus trip to wherever they're going, or as of recently, um, we put a young lady on an airplane and sent her back to family. So we make contact with the family and ensure that they're going to take them in, um, and then we provide the money for the transportation for that. So. I have some numbers here. Uh, in the last, well, basically since 09, 
Um, we've placed um, approximately 12 people back with family or friends, and out of those 12, none of them, <coughs> I, think, and I keep in contact with quite a few of them, none of them have returned back to the state of homelessness. So, you know, with that program, you know, we consider that the perfect storm, 100% success rate. Um, we obviously can't do that with everybody because not everybody has those options. But certainly when we come across somebody who is willing and able and has those resources in place, then we want to be able to have the money set aside to make that happen. So that's one of our key programs. Um, just in the last couple of months with our collaboration with uh, the officers down in Anaheim, and I'm working very closely with them, obviously, um, mentoring some of their programs down there. But uh, Anaheim has stepped up, and uh, through Coast to Coast Foundation, who's also supporting their program, uh, they have reunited four of their homeless people back with family or friends. <laughs> they completed that relocation. So um, we're pretty proud of that, and, and uh, we're proud that we're working closely with the city of Anaheim. We're well aware that... Uh, when it came time to open the armory, that it wasn't just our city that stepped up with extra funding to get it open early, but it was Anaheim that, that uh, met that same uh, obligation and we were able to open it early. So um, I, I think some of these things are, uh, are definitely groundbreaking, they're historical, and these are the kind of things that we want to build on. Um, the best I can tell you is, you know, the, the only way to, to, to get out there and, and you know, find out what the needs are is to come out and volunteer. So um, some of the people here in the audience, some of the people up at the dais have been out to volunteer with us and open that invitation to everybody. Um, the first and third Sunday at La Palma Park, 2.30 in the afternoon, everybody's welcome. And then, of course, I know it's on the holiday, but if perhaps family permits and you can come out on Easter, Thanksgiving, or Christmas, we'd love to have you come out there. We do do a couple fundraisers during the course of the year. Uh, those fundraisers are really what makes this possible. And the other thing I wanted to mention is Coast to Coast Foundation uh, is 100% volunteer based. So there is absolutely nobody on payroll. So all the money that comes in goes right back into our community or in the case of Anaheim, we're working with them now. So, okay, thank you for your time. Sit down, Marie. Do you want to introduce yourself? And make sure you um, tell everybody, unless the mayor is going to, about your fundraiser this Saturday night. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this is the founder of It's um, a privilege and an honor to serve the community. Service and I'm glad we're in a platform that we can actually be of service to everybody that needs help. And um, with your support, we can grow programs um, and put everything back into the community. So we do appreciate the continued support and all of our projects that we're trying to expand, especially into Anaheim, which there's a huge need there too. With the community. So it's been a great feeling. Thank you. And we do have a fundraiser if you want to support us. It's this Saturday. Uh, it's Casino Night over at the Tuscany Club. It's um, 4 to 8 if you guys can make it. If not, we'd like to take donations online. And we'll see you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you feel strong enough to tear some paper?
No reserve for council person. You were among the VIPs. And this will go up. This will go up on February 1. You are the volunteer of the month for February. Now, I have to remark a few more things. You are the principal source of creating Coast to Coast. You continue with your time. Among the things you do, you have a garage somewhere. And you fill that garage with blankets and water and jackets and anything that homeless people might need. And occasionally, policemen come by and put that in the trunks of their car. Almost every day. And when it runs low, you replenish it. Now, it's been said, the reason volunteers are not paid is not because they're worthless. It's because they are priceless. You are indeed a very priceless person, all of you. Thank you for caring and helping to make Fullerton a fabulous city. Would all the yellow shirts please come up here and join us for a picture? And someone, a couple who are not in yellow shirts also, who are connected with Coast to Coast. On the agenda it says closed session report, but there isn't any. Uh, because of the interest in the jury trial that was recently held and concluded, I'm going to, with the permission of the council, move item 12 to this point on our agenda. <coughs> I support that. That's a motion. Okay. Well, it's, it's just kind of like consensus, if that's all right. Okay. okay. Item 12. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Chief of Police Hughes to uh, give us a report, and that will be followed by the City Attorney. Sir, the Mayor, uh, thank you. Mayor, City Council Members, Dan Hughes, your police chief. Uh, I'll just make a few brief remarks regarding uh, this incident. First, I think it's important to uh, acknowledge that the criminal case involving these former officers has absolutely no impact whatsoever on the decisions I have already made regarding the, the employment status of these former officers. Secondly, I understand that one of the officers has alleged that I have wrongfully terminated him and that he wants his job back. I, I want this community to know that I am confident in the decision making that I have made regarding these former <coughs> officers, and I intend to vigorously defend <coughs> my position and my decisions in each and every step of the employment grievance process that they have. And then, then just lastly, although there has been a criminal case on the state level that is over, and we are in the process of the administrative hearings, uh, I think it's also important to know that I have been consistently meeting with the investigator from the FBI and as of even last week have met and renewed my vow that I will, will personally assist them and our department will cooperate with them fully while they investigate this case 
and make a determination of their possible in involvement in it. And so those are just a few remarks that I would make uh, to you. Uh, may I ask you about uh, the hiring practices? Has that changed in the last year or so? Yes, sir, they have. Actually, they, they've changed drastically. So there's been a number of uh, changes we have done in our police department. Obviously, uh, we know that uh, um, Michael Janaco the, of the Office of the Independent Review came in, made uh, 59 recommendations. We have uh, completed almost all of those recommendations. However, one of the, one of the other issues uh, that I looked at when looking at our police department was our hiring standards. So we have not only improved those hiring, hiring standards, but we've also changed the method in which we look for our, or our recruit our police officers. And so uh, I'm happy to report to you that uh, just last week is the, we graduated three police officers that, uh, from the police academy, and that is the first time in 20 years that we've actually hired police officers uh, done a recruiting uh, a concept and it sent them through the academy. It, it generally speaking, taking officers from other police departments and have uh, brought them over as laterals. And so for the first time in 20 years, we are now taking entry level officers and we have a great pool and we have three more that are, are getting started as well. In addition to our recruiting standards, our, we are also um, changed the way that we do our background investigations. One, one of the issues that, in looking at it, that I was current concerned about is that we had a significant problem with nepotism. And, 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 and so sometimes there was a problem with ensuring that the backgrounds were done, in my belief, properly or at least thoroughly. And so for that reason, we have actually uh, hired an outside company to conduct all background investigations uh, of all, all personnel who we consider to be police officers. And they make those recommendations on whether or not that person successfully passes that background investigation or not. Thank you so much. Are there any questions from the council of uh, Chief Hughes? Yes, I have a question. Chief, you mentioned that you were working with the FBI with respect to an investigation. Does that mean that the possibility of a federal criminal lawsuit exists? It does exist. Uh, I have spoken to that to them. Uh, they are again continuing with their investigation. They are investigating a possible civil rights violation. And again, I have renewed uh, our department's full support and cooperation with their investigation. At this point, though, you don't know if there will be a federal prosecution. I do not know. Do you have any idea how long it will take for that decision to be made? <laughs> I do not know. Uh, I think there's a parallel there with the Rodney King situation. Could you uh, enlighten us on that? Well, I, I think what I'd, I'd like to do is, is refer any questions regarding uh, the investigation from the FBI to the FBI. I think that would be a, a probably more appropriate manner to handle it. Well, I, I think if I recall, the officers involved in the Rodney King meeting were found not guilty. And then there was a subsequent federal uh, criminal charge brought, and that did stick, if I remember. So we don't know what the parallel will be. That is correct, sir. Okay. Uh, I'd like the city attorney to perhaps uh, weigh in on the procedures that we as a council take and uh, what the status of the city is in this matter. Certainly, Mr. Mayor. The um, first part is the criminal proceedings, and as the chief has just indicated, uh, the city and the city council really has no decision-making role with, re with respect to the criminal procedures. Uh, that's a determination at this point in time in the, uh, has the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, where they choose or choose not to uh, proceed with criminal indictments is entirely <coughs> <in> their <coughs> uh, jurisdiction. And this city and this city council has no uh, decision-making uh, role with, res res with respect to <coughs> those criminal proceedings. Uh, secondly, with regard to the uh, employment status, I've said this in the past, but I think because there's some uh, new phases and some time has passed, uh, that I take a brief moment to go through the process regarding um, the employment rights and processes for the city of Fullerton, recognizing that uh, police officers as public officials and as subject to the police, the police <coughs> rights have certain legal rights and opportunities of appeal uh, that they can afford themselves of as a matter of law. Our process is one in the city of Fullerton in which uh, the department involved initially reviews and makes a determination as to what has occurred regarding the actions of a given employee and makes a determination as to whether uh, 
certain things should occur with respect to discipline and possible termination. In this particular case, there was a series of officers involved, and Chief Hughes made a determination regarding three of those officers to proceed to termination. Uh, that matter was then reviewed by the city manager. He reviewed uh, those determinations and sustained the determination by the chief. At that point in time, the officers have a right of appeal. That right of appeal, they can assert it. In, all, in this case, all three have asserted that right of appeal, uh, though they've received notices of termination, to appeal those decisions. Their status currently as, in, as regards the city of Fullerton is they have been terminated. With respect to the right of appeal, uh, the next step is that with that right of appeal is a right to have an independent arbitrator uh, review evidentially the uh, facts and circumstances surrounding the decision reached by the chief and the city manager, and at which time he will issue an advisory opinion with respect to his findings as he reviews that certain sort of 